Is Wheels Unleashed too dead? Project Acceleracer, just too hard. And the Acceleracer's card game hasn't had an update in 20 years. Plus no one plays it and half the cards are unplayable. So what's the solution for a Hot Wheels fan in 2023? Let me present you with the Hot Wheels trading card game. This is taking the concept of the Accelerator card game and expanding upon it, improving on the rules, making more cards playable and putting a lot more into your personal deck building rather than just making you play the same deck as everyone else. Unlike the Hot Wheels Accelerators card game, we will be adding more cards. So instead of just finishing on set one, we have sets two, three and four already available before we've even gone super public with this beyond that sets five and six are already well into production and pretty much ready to go the most of it does look like it is still in beta there is still a lot of things that are still being worked on a couple of cars cards will have no image because we just don't have an image for them yet but some of them will have images ready to go in a moment's notice um, more updates will come out over time and many things will be updated as we can sometimes a card effect can be updated and changed as we need to but at the moment for the majority of the cards it is pretty well balanced your game board here has many options different states you can change it into they just have different images for you again these will be updated regularly so that you have more options just depending on what sort of thing you like to represent your deck we have a rule book on the board as well as a rule book accessible in the file that shows all cards currently in production and all cards that will ever be in production. We have obviously the template for the back of the card, low res, high res, a couple of promos and then a list of every single card in the game along the side here. All the way down we'll find set 7 which is currently being worked on. The races fans are going to like this set. This file is publicly accessible so anyone else can have a look at upcoming cars um, or cards in general and we're going to just go through the rules and sing, simple things like that just to help you better understand the game. Let's begin. So all these rule book sheets are double sided and pages are numbered. You've also got a contents page that tells you what's going on is out of place that's annoying uh, so this is up to date but we're going to save ourselves some time and we're going to flick over to the document because the document also has all the rules it's pretty much just a cut and paste <laughs> uh, so we have all this stuff here oops that was a mistake we're going to fix that up so next time I update the track cards will be the nine will be in the right spot so what is the Hot Wheels TCG? You can build a team of your favorite cars and drivers from different aspects of the Hot Wheels franchise in the Hot Wheels card game. So a lot of these cars and drivers will represent either members of the Hot Wheels community. Uh, it obviously started out as just a Hot Wheels Unleashed sort of card game. And we are expanding upon that to just general Hot Wheels. So as the sets go on, you'll see a lot more love for things outside of just Hot Wheels Unleashed, but the first three sets are entirely Hot Wheels Unleashed focused. Uh, you can create your own deck from hundreds of cards and everyone can have their own deck. We've got players that are playing um, a Road Beasts, uh, not a Road Beasts, a Power Rocket deck. I personally play a Boom Car deck uh, and you'll see just some people playing audio twos or you can base them around teams such as the wave rippers and the street brief from hot wheels world race your deck is anywhere from 50 to 70 cards um this is a pretty standard deck size for a lot of card games and then your cars will compete to win tracks faster cars will have less laps and the slower bigger cars will have more laps to complete a track um, and then your track deck is also something that you personally create, 6 or 12 cards. Obviously, if you want your track deck to be small, 
it's a six card deck so that you can see your tracks more often but having a 12 card track deck means that you're less likely to see your opponent's tracks because tracks are pulled from a combined pool so to play the game all you need is tabletop simulator your deck your track deck and a six-sided die uh, some card effects do use a six-sided die particularly the lucky strikers deck um, and also just to decide who's going first all these things are accessible from the base game on Tabletop Simulator. So all you need is Tabletop Simulator and the Workshop download, which is very easy to get. Just clicking a couple of buttons. Uh, your deck can only contain three copies of any car or action name. So you might have two different kinds of Twin Mill, but if it's just called Twin Mill, you can only have two copies of it. An action, like an effect might say otherwise. Uh, a driver name so if you have a driver let's say cobalt which i put myself in the game of course uh that you can only have one copy of cobalt in the deck same with vert wheeler there might be three different vert wheelers but you can only play one vert wheeler uh they counted as the same card as long as they have the same name so if you have two different twin mills, you can put two of one and one of the other, or just three of one, zero of the other, whatever you want. Some cars do belong to a driver. They have an apostrophe in their name. So instead of saying Diora 2, it'll be Vert Wheelers or Vert's Diora 2. Um, if it does have that apostrophe, meaning that it belongs to a driver, then you can only have one of that car. So you're not using three of someone's personal car. Uh, and then obviously for your track deck, you can only have one of each track. Some cars and drivers and stuff will have effects that say you can have more than one or only one. Um, when they say that on the card, then obviously follow the card. Your play area, this is a little outdated, uh, but it does just give you the gist of it all. It has your field, which is a big area, your deck, which um, is where your deck goes, obviously, and your junkyard is your discard pile. So any time a card leaves the field or your hand or anything, it goes to the junkyard. Uh, the track, so the current jack track goes up here and the track deck has actually been moved. So we can just put that there, but obviously not because I'll update this. <laughs> uh, and then your podium is up where the track deck used to be because the track and track deck are next to each other now. Uh, when you get five cars in your podium, it doesn't matter about drivers and tracks, but when there's five cars in your podium, you win the game. Uh, your car will have its name, its team. This is also an outdated picture of the Cobalt's track manga, uh, but this is just explaining what you can find on your cars. It's not too big a deal. Um, as you can see, they have their teams in the top right. And this stuff all still applies to the current cars. It just looks a lot better now. You win a game. When your car reaches zero laps or one lap, if they have track bonus, your car will win that track. So that car, driver, and podium, uh, car, driver, and track are added to your podium. Uh, and then any effects of the cars and the, the cards in general that are added to the podium is activated immediately. After all those effects have been resolved, you play the next track from the top of the track deck and the current turn immediately ends. So if you are in the middle of your turn when you win a track, you just end your turn. Uh, this will stop you winning like four tracks in a row and give your opponent a chance to play the game. Uh, once you have five cars on the podium, you win. It doesn't matter if you have five tracks or five drivers, as long as you have the five cars. If there's no cars in your left left in your deck, you do not lose the game. Uh, but you can't get any further cards from your deck by drawing or searching. It's just empty. Um, this is most games have you lose when you run out. Uh, we've decided against that just because you can run out very easily in this and. It just doesn't feel like a very fair way to lose and to punish someone for drawing too many cards. There's no hand size at the moment. We might put one in later. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't feel like there's a need for it. People have massive hands of unplayable cards sometimes, and that's, you know, just part of the game. Uh, at the start of the game, you both have seven cards in hand. A random dice roll determines who goes first, just whoever rolls higher. Uh, and you start with three boosts. So every turn, you'll have three boosts. Uh, at the start of your turn, you draw a card, and then your upkeep happens. So when your up upkeep happens, you'll lose all boosts and then gain three boosts. Uh, that should probably be included here. 
Return player loses all boost, then gains all boost. Easy fix. Um, so that'll be updated in a future. Whoops. Patch. Probably later today. Uh, in your main phase, you can use your boost to play cards, pay one boost to draw a card, or activate your once per turn effects. And then at the end of your turn, all cards you control that have a driver equipped to them will lose one lap. You decide the order your cards lose laps. If any card reaches zero, or one lap with a track bonus, then that car wins the track and your turn ends. Uh, and then that's when you go through the end of track process. Oh, here we go. Yeah. At the start of your upkeep, you lose all leftover boosts of the previous turn and gain three boosts. So you can, some card effects will allow you to use boost in your opponent's turn. So you might have some leftover that you want to use there. Um, and then if you didn't use it, you'll lose it. Uh, if you control at least two cards of the same team during your upkeep, you get a team bonus, which gives you an additional one boost for each team at the, of at least two cards. Uh, so if you have two different teams that have two cards each, you'll gain two boosts on top of your already your existing three uh it does not apply to xbox and playstation teams these are two generic teams uh they have a lot of cards for them so it would be very unfair to make those just so easy to get the team bonus uh you can only play drivers if you have a car on the field to equip it to if you can't equip that driver to a car there's nothing there's no reason to have them so you can't play them uh, all cars can take one damage. So when a car is damaged by a card effect, it's rotated sideways. If that car is damaged again, it is wrecked and sent to the junkyard. A car has a, a car or driver has a track bonus matching the current track. They win the track with one lap remaining instead of zero. Uh, that does come up very rarely, but it still is really cool when it happens. Uh, and when a track is won, the current turn ends, obviously, and then... If you take a card from your deck for any reason other than drawing, you must reveal that card and shuffle the deck every time. This is a rule in every card game, except for when a card says just search any card in some of them. But if it says search one, you know, action card, obviously you have to prove to your opponent there's an action and you have to shuffle because otherwise you just, you've seen your whole deck stacking. Uh, we've got some keywords. We're going to be doing more keywords in the future. And then we have our team icons. These are all the teams that are in the game or going to be in the game in the next two sets. Uh, so obviously Speedholics, Wild Riders are not available yet, nor are Silencers, Metal Maniacs, or Velocity X. But these will be coming in, same with High Bank Racing, still coming in in sets six and seven. Um, and this is just, yeah, this will help you just associate your icons with your cards. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Obviously, you can see this one here, track bonus is F0 Big Blue, so this will win at one lap left if it's that track on the field. Uh, building a deck can be difficult and take some time. You generally want to have around 12, 13 drivers and about 15 cards, and then whatever you want beyond that. Actions, there's a lot of generic actions that are available that just fit into any deck. Stuff like uh, Blind Box can get you a car very easy, as can Limited Offers. Uh, crash Cut is just super strong, so almost every deck plays Crash Cut. And then for cars, it just depends what you're doing. Generally, you want to pick a team and go with that team. Sometimes there'll be a lot of support for one particular car, like here we have RDO2, right? Uh, but obviously, so Animax's RDO2 is really good for the Neo Storm deck, uh, but the regular RDO2 just gets better if you're playing audio 2 so you want to be playing multiple of the audio 2 if possible just simple standard stuff like that um and then drivers obviously if you can get the drivers to match your car that's really nice uh so obviously if you can get vert wheeler in any vert car then sometimes there's bonuses for that especially with syndicate these will have bonuses for having matching cars um and every team has their own unique play style. So I just want to quickly go through the teams that we currently have and what their play style actually is. Uh, so obviously the BHR team is all focused on 
healing cards. So you're healing your cards so they're not getting damaged and dying. Uh, Neostorm is gaining boost. Bandits is drawing cards and discarding cards. Drones is losing laps. So they're all about losing laps, but they start with high laps. Uh, Nigai is about having multiple cars on the same team. So if you have multiple Nigai cars, they improve. They work well together. And Excella Tugas is about damaging themselves to gain effects. So they can damage themselves to hut on other cars, or they can damage themselves to lose laps, lots of stuff like that. Uh, Syndicate is all based around having car having drivers that match their car name. Very, very strong deck for that. And Riptide is about track effects. So a lot of things, they want Riptide tracks on the field and they can manipulate the track deck to get to Riptide tracks. Uh, Xbox is focused on Xbox cars. PlayStation is focused on PlayStation drivers. And then Wave Rippers, I forget what Wave Rippers do. I think there's something to do with track effects as well. Yeah, yeah. They are unaffected by track effects. Street Breed is about cars in your podium. So the more Street Breed cars in your podium, the stronger your deck will be, the stronger all your cards will be. Uh, these are related to actions. These are related to, I believe, track effects again in some way. Um, modules, sorry. I believe it's, yeah. So these are modules, which are a certain type of action. And then these are anti-action. These just get better for, they're all mostly immune to actions and they get better from your opponent playing actions and wasting them. And so on and so forth. They've all got their own little things. These are unaffected by modules and have a lot of protection, hard to kill, but they're slow. Uh, the Lunar Tunes all work well when you get them together. And Lucky Strikers roll dice rolls. So on and so forth. Lots of that, that sort of stuff. There is a starter deck here of 50 cards with an 8 card track deck. Just for those that are still wanting to learn how to play the game. Uh, it is mostly Xbox based, I believe. Uh, but it is kind of just generic, so it had a lot of Xbox stuff, but also just some generic cars as well. I think all the cars in it are generic, it's just Xbox drivers. Um, and it's just good for teaching you a little bit of the synergies of, you know, Night Shifters work well together, El Caminos uh, prefer to be damaged. There's just a lot of that sort of stuff. Twin Mills usually start with high laps, um, and then anything that affects Twin Mills, like the Twin Mill drivers, will bring their laps down. Lots of stuff like that. Lots of unique little synergies between cars. And then we also have our 40 tracks. Uh, some of these represent a team, such as the monster trucks or street breed. Uh, and some of them represent no team and just affect everyone. Some of them have good effects. Some of them have punishing effects, such as World Race Leg 1 will damage everything that isn't a Scorcher's car, which is terrifying to have to deal with. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, some of them prefer to be the first track some of them don't have an effect if they're not the first track. But yeah, at some point we should have a few games on the channel. Uh, every now and then I will play someone, record it, and put it on the channel for people to see. There are a couple of videos already. Um, have a look at them. It's a lot of fun, and it's not just me posting only videos where I win. Um, there is at least one up there where I get destroyed, but I just, I put up every game. Um, and we're hosting a tournament that will start March 1st, uh, or the weekend of March 1st. I'll just have a quick squeeze at a calendar for you. Uh, the tournament will be starting on, sorry, the weekend. So March 4th, I believe, will be the start of the tournament. Um... Hopefully we can get it all cracked out in a day or two. Uh, if not, we'll continue on from there. So March 4th, put them in your calendars. Sign-ups close end of February. So sign-ups will close um, February 28th. So get signed up. Link's in the description. Um, come play. It's fun. People are really enjoying it, and it does everything that the Accelerosis card game could not.